Okay. All right, well, we are recording. So tonight we are making perfect roast with garlic and herbs. It is a really classic venison roast recipe from my cookbook, Venison Every Day. Um, so I'm Allie, this is Jared and hey Maddie. Guys. Um, Thanks for uh, joining in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we are going to make some roast. It's a very simple recipe, very classic, very, like, it's a, it adheres very closely to a French preparation. Jared is actually going to cook tonight because I have Maddie in my arms and yeah. So he is, Jared, you're, you're a good cook, but you don't really cook anymore. I don't really cook anymore. No, that kind of, <laughs> I always enjoyed cooking. I still do enjoy cooking, but, yeah. uh, I, yeah, I'm a uh, squirrel, so, um. I guess we're going to test out my cooking skills. Yes, but so he's um, going to, uh, oh, Melissa says she's not getting sound. Okay. Um, okay. It looks like our sound is on. Um, Megan, can you type and let us know if you are getting sound? Looks like, <sighs> Melissa, you are not. Hmm. It looks like your microphone isn't connected, so I wonder if um, your sound isn't working on, because it's saying that, it's I, so yeah. It's working. Oh, you know what? She can't hear. Duh. I'm not talking. She can't. Did you not turn the audio? Um, Sorry, just typing to her in the chat to turn her audio on. Okay, Miss Madison. <laughs> okay, Megan says she is getting sound. So I think once Melissa um, turns on her audio, you know what? It says she's connecting to audio. Okay. So it looks like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like she's got it now. So okay. hopefully she cool. can hear. Um, okay, so why don't you start by opening this package up? Right. There's a knife right there. Yep. I'm gonna shift a couple things around since I'm looking. Oh, you're right-handed. I'm left-handed. Yeah. Do you want to switch sides? Maybe oh, guys, this is so funny. Yeah, I'm, um, the here, yeah. So we're going to be starting with here. our nice package oh, roast. Maybe we'll start there you go, Maddie. Okay. Yeah. I think so. you have to, like, actually hit the... Oh, no, you got it. Yeah, no, okay. Open, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open my roast up. So this is a bone-in leg roast, actually. This recipe works well for like neck roast, shoulder roast, um, leg roast. So this will be actually a little bit of a tougher cut of meat. I'm um, going to yeah, go that away. Really, really um, so this will actually be a tougher cut of meat, but this is a great way to prepare something that is a little bit tougher because what it's going to do, it's going to breathe and break down in the oven. And um, kind of tough to see on this video. Let me lift this up a little bit. Um, it's very, there's a lot of sinew and you don't really need to remove that like you would if you were cooking a steak because that's actually going to like break down in the oven and it will just kind of help with like the richness of the broth. Um, but all you're going to do with this chair mm -hmm. is you're just going to um, towel it off with your towel. So blot it dry and then wash your hands and then just put salt and pepper all over it. I'm going to go ahead and start heating our pan that's on the oven back here. Okay. I'm going to put my knife on the wooden pan. He doesn't want to put his knife on the wood board. Well, I'm um, the blood on the, on the nice board, okay. keeping it nice. Yeah. Good job, Mandy. So, now that I've... Yes, have it dry. Nicely. And that just helps, you know, to get a really nice sear, because we're actually going to sear this piece of meat. So, removing off. the blood gives you a nice pan sear. Yeah, or re removing any moisture. That will just help with any kind of meat, like chicken, pork, um, obviously venison. Okay. That's probably good, my friend. All right. Now that um, I pat it down. Yes. What's my next move? Wash your hands. Wash my hands. Yeah, they're so behind okay. you. Um, so yeah, by patting everything dry, it's going to help you create a really nice crust. And behind me, I have a Dutch oven pan. You can use. I like like an either a Dutch oven or cast iron. I'm going to cook this whole roast in my Dutch oven, so I'm doing it in there. 
but um, I like a nice heavy bottom pan for searing. And again, since it's pat dry, it's gonna make a really nice brown crust, which is all the where all the flavor goes. So you're just yes. gonna cover this with uh, salt and pepper. Salt we, pepper. The recipe calls for a teaspoon each, but we don't really need to, to yeah, yeah. cover it nicely. Not super heavily, but enough salt. No, you need way more than that. A teaspoon okay. is a good amount of salt. So Teaspoon. this, yeah, this recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt and pepper. So a half teaspoon on each side, really. Um, so you're gonna wanna do your pepper, and if you don't do your pepper while your hands are, well, you can use this stuff if you'd like, so you don't have to wash yeah. your hands again. I am going to take you up on that. Yeah. So do that side. And but see, there's like there's a lot of like silver skin or um, sinew, a lot of tendons that we can see in parts. here because this is a leg roast, and like I said, this will break down. That's good. That's good on the salt. Good. Yeah, and then pepper, pepper it all yeah. up. Fresh cracked pepper. Fresh cracked pepper, Daddy. Very good. And this is just creating flavor. So with this roast, it's super simple. So very I love pepper. Yeah, so I do too. But um, you know, it, it calls for a good amount of salt and pepper, but what we're doing is we're creating layers of flavor in this recipe. So because we're using such simple ingredients like roast, and it's just really wine, uh, stock, a couple of herbs, garlic, lemon, and a little bit of balsamic vinegar, super simple, but creating these layers of flavor is super key. I'm gonna so, take, we're gonna take this and put it in the pan. I will yeah. do my next guess. Hold on, I need to put oil on there first. Here, Oops. two tablespoons of oil. Two tablespoons. Yes. Of oil. So we're doing two tablespoons of oil. I use olive oil. That always works fine for me. Um, if you have something like, oh my gosh, if you have like venison tallow or venison fat, that would be absolutely delicious because it has a nice high cook and high heat point. Um, oh wow, he's dispersing it all very yes. nicely. So now we're just gonna put this roast right in the Dutch oven. And you can just put this when you're done. You can put this in the Well, oven. that's, yeah. And then we're done with that. Is, I'm just gonna make this easy on myself. He's making it easy on himself. So, and what, how gonna, it, so we don't make a huge mess. I'm gonna take this and place it nicely in just like that. You can hear this. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah. yeah. So, and actually. Here, keep the tongs. So I'm gonna keep the tongs. He's gonna keep the tongs. All right, so the roast is in the pan now. And in just a second, we're gonna take you guys over there when we flip so that you can see the sear. But right now I'm gonna have him work on our braising liquid. And what braising is, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of braising before, but braising just means cooking something in a small amount of liquid, low and slow in the oven. So this braises and a cooking liquid or broth of so maybe, so maybe I'm jumping down here, but yeah. how long are we going to be here? Okay, so to get a good crust, you need about like anywhere from two and a half to five minutes per side on medium high heat. Um, and you want like a brown, brown crust. It's okay if there are a couple pieces that look like a little... So just keep an eye surface. on it once you start seeing yeah. that. Nice. Yeah, and a good way to tell. Oh, here. Yeah. He's gonna have a sip of wine. Have a sip of wine because it's uh, Tuesday. <laughs> um, a really good way to tell if something is seared is if you touch it in the pan, and if it doesn't move, then it's not seared long enough because there's not enough of a crust to make it non-stick. So what we're actually gonna do is go over there and kind of poke it, and if it moves, we know we've got a really nice crust. If it moves, it's still alive. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna make our braising liquid like I was just talking about. Um, and the first thing you're gonna, uh, here, you can do it in this bowl. Okay. Well, you don't need that measuring cup. All right, he's gonna reorganize. There you go. He has a system. All right, okay. Make sure you're talking loud because yes. talk loud. Yes, we'll talk loud. Um, okay, where am I going, what am I doing? Cup of broth or cup, stock. One cup of broth. Yes. So, we're gonna make this nice organic beef stuff. Yeah, so okay. we can do beef stock, we can do venison stock, um, or venison bone broth or broth. So what I like to do is ask for the bones after a harvest of venison, and you can make beautiful stock. There is a recipe in venison every day for stock, and it is awesome. It's like totally all purpose. That's not a cup. It's not a cup. Oh, it is a cup. Come on. 
<laughs> one cup going in. All right, one cup going in, half cup of wine. Half a cup of wine. Yeah. So, a note on the wine. This is a nicer bottle of wine. Yeah. It's a dry cab. Mm -hmm. You do not actually need to cook with really nice wine. To be able to cook with wine, it just needs to be drinkable. So, okay. yeah, a lot of restaurants use box wine. So if you find yourself cooking with wine a lot, like that black box wine, pick up a box of that and just keep it in the fridge for cooking. Um, that is absolutely fine. You do not need a nice, super nice, um, can you eyeball three tablespoons of that? Three right. tablespoons, yeah. yeah. So it's gonna count like one, two, three yeah. gloves, one, two, three gloves. Well, yeah. that, that would be more than one table, that would be more, yeah. Just plug it. One. That's one? Yeah. Okay, you more than that. Two. Not three, three. You're done. Like that. Great. I'm done. He's done. Three. All right. Okay, we're gonna so that's the liquids of our broth. Um, no, you're going to add um, about three tablespoons of the tomato paste. Three tablespoons of the tomato paste. Can opener would be helpful. I mean, can opener. Yeah. We're just going to make this like this just to make sure you guys can all see. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions so far? You can type them in the chat or feel free to unmute. Right in here, we're going right in. Go Not on. the whole thing, three tablespoons. Three tablespoons? Yeah. Cool, okay. Do you know what that looks like? Yeah. This yeah. Madison's very good. This content. is a tablespoon. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna do three. Three like a lot. Eh. Yeah. That's yeah. one. Oh, that's, oh, that's why maybe a little bit faster. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. Yeah, yeah. Three, three. So this just gives the broth a lot of richness. So um, the wine and the balsamic vinegar have a really strong acidic component, which stands up really well to that like stronger, more metallic taste of venison that some people might call gamey. Um, and you're gonna zest this lemon. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, that some people might call it gamey. Yeah, in turn, turn, turn. Oh, oh God, I took a little bit of off, huh? Yeah, you don't like my how you zest. Nope, you gotta like just keep turning. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. there you go. We're learning okay. to zest, folks. We're learning to zest. So to zest, we keep our citrus moving. <laughs> Works the same. As long as you can get some, yeah. some lemon peels in there. You're and there. also the lemon is building on that acidic flavor profile. Um, it seems like it is a lot of acid, but trust me, it's great. So you so now, as you really can off of that? Yeah, the whole thing, but that's good. You got right, well, then you said the whole thing. So well, right. I need you to see if you need to put that lemon. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the lemon. I'm going to take a peek here. It no, smells like it's... It, Oh, that's perfect. Oh, wow, that's got a really nice Yeah, and then why don't you grab the camera and show them. Okay. And I'm just going to whisk this. You're going to whisk it? Yeah, whisk for you. Okay. No, All right, you guys are coming with me, and uh, I'm going to show you what we're working with here. I'll show you. That, um, so hopefully you can see that well. Turn on the light. Yeah, there you go. So. That's a nice crust. That's what uh, that's what it should look like. A nice pan sear. Okay. All right. And Allie is whisking away. Yeah. So the tomato paste gives it a little bit of thickness and a lot of richness. The last thing that you're gonna do, my friend, is you are going to cut up four cloves of garlic. Can you see? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're good. All right, what am I doing now? Four cloves of garlic. Four cloves of garlic. Yeah. This is, these are really big cloves. Sure. So, yeah, that's good right there. So Four peel minutes. and just cut them up. Yeah, okay. So a good way to peel them, you know the smash trick? Yeah, get your side Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'll be in the hand, but. Wait, sure it's properly, so. Huh? Make sure they feel properly. You don't want to taste it, but they're in there. Yeah, we smash it so it comes all the way up. Yeah, that's just as much as you get in there. 
Yeah, there you go. Woo! It don't pop. Be careful not to put your hand on this process. Yeah, you don't actually have to push down that hard. Oh, well. <laughs> so we're just smashing and chopping some cloves of garlic. The garlic is adding more flavor. Right. Once I smash I it up, we can we can remove the outer yeah. skin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow, look at you go. Yeah, girl. Feeling this garlic. Oh, okay. Maybe I should have chopped the garlic for you beforehand. Maybe. Yeah. You want me to chop it now? Just one? roughly chop it, yeah. Okay. Wow. This is the longest I've ever seen garlic be chopped. Well, I'll do it the right way. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's perfect. That's good. Great. Great. This recipe can be like loosely followed. Um, if you don't have fresh garlic, you can use garlic powder. Um, if you don't have balsamic right vinegar, in. yeah, right in there. You can use red wine vinegar. There. And now we got our garlic in there. Yeah, and then um, we'll just add some pine sprays on top before we put it in the oven. So this is all set to go, our braising liquid. So now what Jared's actually going to do is just take this, and I'm going to turn right off the heat. So I'm going to come over here. Out of the way. Yeah. And I can start pouring out. Yep, and you can just pour. Be careful because it might splash up on you. But he's actually going to pour, and that's going to deglaze the pan. Well, I just want to cut it off early. Yeah, come on, wait. I'll see if I can one on this. You can smell the acid. Can I see this? Like, yeah. Hopefully you guys can see. I'm just going to, yep, I'm pouring it into the it. Pour all that all right. Oh, I got all the pieces. That's okay. Great. That's just tomato paste. Right. Awesome. Okay. So, oh, somebody's waiting to come in. Okay. So, the roast has now been covered in that glazed braising liquid. And what that actually does is it's going to break up all the little bits from the searing at the bottom of the pan. Again, where all the flavor is. So, um, now what we're going to do, really, if you just kind of want to move that well, I guess more importantly, bit, like the, the um, acid is really breaking down that. Also, yeah, the acid. What? The, the, the flavor that most people don't necessarily enjoy. Right? The gamey right. flavor. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the acid is breaking that down, but also the liquid, anytime you sear something and then pour braising liquid over it, it gets all of the little good flavor bits off the bottom of the pan. Um, now, Jared, actually what you can do is just cover that. So there's no heat on this right now? There's no heat. The oven is preheated to 350. Okay, so we're going to cover this? With the lid. So I'm using a Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, what you would have wanted to do is you would have wanted to sear your roast in a heavy bottom pan, cast iron, a really, really good quality um, stainless steel pan. And then what you would want to do is, if, it, if the pan is not oven safe, pull the roast out, put it in a roasting pan. But you still want to pour this braising liquid in the pan that you seared the meat in because again, it gets all the flavor bits off, off of the bottom of the pan. And it just really mm. makes that rich. So, so right now it's basically marinating. Not really marinating. Mm -hmm. So that was like a sear and then braise. And right, so, it's a braise, but I mean, the juices are collecting in there, which is basically a marinade is like something you do before you cook something and you add flavor. I'm using so that's fun to see. Yeah, a marinade is something that you do to a piece of meat before you cook it or vegetable. You can marinate. Yeah. Um, but no, this is a braise. This is soaking in all the flavor right now. Yes. Yes. And so then our next step, and this is really, really easy. Um, ours is, again, a bone in leg roast. So I think bone in is going to have a ton of flavor too. But what we're looking for is this roast after we put it in the oven for, I'm thinking that this is going to take at least two and a half hours. But the thing with venison cooking, um, or really any wild game roast, and honestly any roast, if it does not fall apart tender, you just need to cook it longer. So don't be afraid, and sometimes that might be like an hour longer. Um, so really the test of doneness is when it is like falling apart. So you should be able to go in there with a fork and 
fork and kind of pull it and it should look really tender. Um, something that I like to do as well, maybe halfway through the cooking process, I take the roast out and I baste it, baste it with those pan juices. So this venison is going to release juices and all of that yummy braising liquid that you're cooking in, which is going to be super delicious, but you want to make sure you continue to coat the roast with those juices. Um, Maddie's falling asleep on us here. Um, so that just, again, uh, builds a flavor profile, encourages the roast to be really tender and gets all the juices like into the meat. Well, because this is a tougher part though, would you say that this would normally take longer than a... Yes. I would say that this would take longer than like a really nice like rump roast. Mm -hmm. um, or even sometimes neck roast can be super tender if it's from a very like fatty right. deer. Well, you have all that sinew and stuff in there, which is really tough. Sinew can be very tough. However, when you braise sinew, it breaks down and it makes things really mm -hmm. delicious. And that's when you get like added um, like protein and collagen. I see mm -hmm. we have a question here. Let me go read the chat box. How do I prevent that gummy texture that venison tends to get? Hmm. I, I guess gummy. gummy. When you say gummy, yeah. I guess. I would say that gummy means that it's still like if you're talking about like kind of like a rubbery taste it's not cooked long enough you need to cook longer so it can break down yeah all the time. yeah mm -hmm. um and so if we're talking like big cuts of like roast meat you need to cook longer if you're talking steaks you need to cook shorter and i know that's a hard concept to grasp mm -hmm. but when you're cooking something like um, a backstrap or tenderloin you want to just like quick sear, quick sear, pan sear. yes, quick pan sear. You want to get used to eating your it's just meat. like a fillet, really. Right, quick. but when you're with doing beef, some people like to eat their beef at like a medium temperature. With venison, you need to be eating um, your meat at like a medium rare. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if you're talking steaks, that kind of gumminess, you've overcooked it. But if you often find that your roast tastes gummy you're not cooking it for long enough. Um, so a nice low oven temperature. This is actually at 350. Um, if you wanted to go lower, you certainly could drop it down to 325 if you feel like the edges are getting burnt, but you definitely want to um, cover it so that, we you know. Transferring yeah, you can transfer that. We have another question. So you transfer that and I'll get to the question. Okay, she said that was helpful, good. Okay, I'm glad it was helpful. We're gonna stand over here a little. Mr. Doran gets that in the oven. And since this is actually going to cook for so long, this is going to be our dinner tomorrow because it probably won't be done until about, oh, 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, but at that point, it should be nice and... should be nice and tender. But again, we're looking for, like, we're going to be looking for this roast to be falling off the bone. Um, and, you know, definitely save those pan juices and spoon it over when you're serving. Um, reserve them. This is the next day. It would make like a great like roast sandwich. Oh man, doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Roast sandwich with provolone cheese and like spoon all of the pan juices over on a nice big fluffy roll. Yeah. That sounds really good. That's probably what we'll do on Thursday. And I think back to those days of like having really tough venison and being like, wow, this is, yeah. Terrible. Hard to work with. And now I don't, it's like, yeah. now that's all I want to eat. Right. I <laughs> know. We love it. I like it better than um, I like it better than beef, personally. Beef now I feel like has like a filmy mouth feel for mm -hmm. me, like all the fat. Mm -hmm. But um, do you guys have any other questions? Because we're about through here. This is going to take about two and a half to three hours. I would say this one it's a little bit smaller, um, so like two to two and a half hours will probably be good. But do you guys have any other questions before we sign off? And if you need help again with this recipe, um, we are recording this cooking segment show um so you'll be able to get it and reference back at any point if you need more help yeah but, ask away it doesn't even need to be cooking related you can ask any questions oh any questions <laughs> well, wow any, not any. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast <laughs> cooking or cooking related maybe i should yeah what did you have that. for breakfast what did I, I actually had that morning that's you oh that's right it. i need yeah. overnight oats mm -hmm. um melissa says not sure if you mentioned but can roasts be overcooked? Um, they they can. You know, you want to look for it to be falling apart tender. 
Oh, he's falling asleep. Um, you want to look for it to be falling apart tender, and then once it is, pull it out. And it's you want to keep it like, hard to overcook yeah. it though, because like the more time it spends in there, it's probably, it can get a little dry if you really if you over really overcook yeah, it. Yeah, but what you want to make sure you do is you keep the lid or like you keep foil over top of your cooking vessel so the liquid doesn't evaporate. Um, and you know, this is one that you can put in the slow cooker too. Stuff in the slow cooker always stays really juicy for me. Do you think it'll take about the same amount of yeah. time? Eight hours on low. Eight hours on low. Uh, eight and to this nine is, hours on you low. said what, three hours on 350? Um, anywhere from two to three hours, depending on the size of your roast. Yeah. This Do you want to small. check on it? Like, would you check on it with a meat thermometer or? You don't really need a, like a meat thermometer because yeah. it's going to be over 165. Because mm -hmm. um, you're not looking for like doneness like you would a steak. That's I guess a really well, like, what, what would tip me off to know that that is It's like, falling apart. So literally just kind of fork in it. Maybe yeah, you know fork in it. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, it can get dry. It's not really going to get overcooked. So a way to combat that um, is just to make sure your lid is on and it's nice and tight. That's why I love cooking with the Dutch oven because it's sealed tight or a slow cooker. So if you want to do this in the slow cooker, wake up in the morning before you go to work, sear it, put everything in the slow cooker and then put it on low for like eight hours. You can do high for like five, six hours. Um, my slow cooker also tends to be like, oh, we definitely need a new one. It is old. It's on the slower end. So well, there, how many of the settings do you have? Probably only like three settings. I have high, high and low and low. warm. Oh, yeah, but yeah. it's, it's pretty old. Um, but yeah. Well, yeah, slow cooker. Crock pot and slow cooker. It's the <laughs> same thing. Years. It's just crock pot's a brand. Oh. Yeah. Didn't actually realize that. Yeah, crock pot's a brand, slow okay. cooker is what it's called. Gotcha. Okay, any other questions? Because that's a really good one. Okay. Well, if we don't have any other questions, thank you guys so much for coming today. Um, if you haven't already, we would absolutely love if you made a recipe, if you would leave us an Amazon review on Venison Every Day. That just helps more people see it because it gets ranked higher on Amazon. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for purchasing Venison Every Day. We're so grateful for all of you. We'll be back next month. I think we're going to do Venison Short Ribs because mm. they are probably my favorite thing to make mm -hmm. for the holidays. I actually make um, short ribs a lot on Christmas day because you can make them the day or two beforehand, put them in the oven and just like heat it up when you're ready to eat and they just get more delicious. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and it's incredible. I can't believe venison ribs get like that. So um, that's what we're gonna do next time. It is another braising recipe, but I just think it's really important and it's good educational content for us hunters and hunters' wives, um, mm -hmm. especially ribs, because a lot of people process those into ground, and I happen to think you should leave them whole. Don't be afraid to get your husbands in the kitchen, too. By the way, husbands, boyfriends, whatever. You know. Or ladies. We enjoy Because well, the we ladies could cooking. be the ones. Well, well, okay. I mean, this is true, but I mean. Ladies could be the ones hunting. <laughs> or they are. They, that's a possibility. Maddie is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, We'll see you next month or hang out on social media. Um, and yeah, thank you and have a great evening. See you guys. Bye, guys.